Hello, welcome back to the videos. This is our fourth video in that series I'm calling pentatonic templates. Uh, the previous three videos we looked at major pentatonic scales like G for instance and I showed you how to use the three chord shapes you know to supply you with a reference point if you like to think of it that way or a template that you can move around the fingerboard. So you have three chord shapes that you're using each one of those is transposable to all 12 major keys, so in essence you have 36 templates that allowed you to play all 12 major keys in three possible positions. 3 times 12 is 36. Now, another thing you'll encounter in bluegrass and old-time music, and most popular music to be honest, is blues notes. Blues we know are these. You've heard it in rock and roll, you've heard it in blues, you've heard it in country. Bluegrass has blues built into it. All popular forms of American music from jazz to bluegrass to old time to pop to country, rock and roll, it all has a pretty decent dose of blues in the music. Now there's a couple of different ways I guess you could look at finding blues notes on your banjo if you're talking about theoretically speaking. You could say well I've heard that a, a blues scale is the third, fifth, and seventh notes of a scale flatted. So you could say the third, fifth, and seventh notes of a G scale, for instance, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. If you flat the third, B is the third note of the scale, you change it to B flat. D is the fifth note, so you'd flat it. F sharp is the seventh note, you'd flat it to an F. So that's one way to concoct or contrive a set of notes that gives you the blue scale for G. So we know a B flat, a D flat, and an F. Those three notes are the notes that could convert a G scale into a G blues scale. Now, another way of looking at it, and the way I teach uh, my students, is to think also with pentatonics for the blues scale notes. And if you're a rock and roll guitar player, or you've learned how to play uh, some easy beginner rock and roll stuff, you're using minor pentatonic scales all the time because a minor pentatonic scale is very close in construction to that blue scale that we just created. So instead of taking a G scale and converting the three notes, the third, the fifth, and the seventh, I'm going to show you how to use these shapes again as a template but for minor pentatonic. So instead of G major pentatonic, we'll have G minor pentatonic. Now immediately you might go, oh this is going to be easy, G major pentatonic, it'll be pretty much the same thing as G minor pentatonic, right? Not so fast. <laughs> Even though they both have G in the name, G major pentatonic, they are really not theoretically related at all. G minor pentatonic is a minor scale. The G minor scale is not related to G. And you say, wait a minute, how does that happen? Well, G minor is actually the relative minor of B flat. So when you're playing a G minor scale, those notes don't come from the G major scale at all. They come from B flat major. Just like E minor does not come from E major as far as that major uh, relative minor relationship goes. E minor actually comes from the key of G. They're related by the sixth degree of each scale. So even though G minor and G major might be parked next to each other on the fingerboard as far as chords go, when we're talking about the key signature and the scales that you're using to play the notes in that key, G minor does not, is not related to G major. You might think, well, that's even more confusing. Well, hold on a minute. But they are parallel to each other. So you could look this up. I'm not going to go into too much theory, but there's a parallel major minor concept. And it's also nice to think about them being parallel on your fingerboard. So I'm going to show you with a close-up here, hopefully. We know that's a G major chord. G minor, you could consider it to be like parallel, parked right next to this. But now I'm talking about chords here. Theoretically speaking, they're said to be parallel to each other in that they both are centered around a G note. But they are not from the same scale. So how would you determine what scale you're playing out of? If it's not G major anymore, where does G minor pentatonic come from? Well, you could start you know, counting notes, count backwards from G and try to figure out where G comes from, 
but these chord shapes that you're using for the major pentatonic, that happy pattern that we learned, you don't have to totally abandon it, you just have to modify it for the G minor pentatonic. How do I know what uh, key those notes are coming out of? Well, look at where your index finger is when you're holding an F-shaped chord. This is going to be the note that's most important for locating this, the bar position. So, if you look at your G chord here, the second string is being held at the third fret with the index finger. That tells you the location of the bar chord from where your blues scale is coming from. So G minor pentatonic is the relative minor of the key of B flat. So when I make a G minor chord, I'm actually, it's the same thing as going from G to E minor. That's G's the major key, E minor is related to it. It's, it's built upon those same notes, just a different arrangement. So when you're playing blues on the banjo, instead of trying to think about a blues scale and relative minor and parallel major minor, all that theory stuff, the theory is built into this template. So whew, the good thing is we don't have to keep talking about all these he heavy theory terms. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what this relationship is. B flat, in this case, as we're talking about G, B flat pentatonic gives you happy sounds over B flat. Now how do we play a B-flat pentatonic scale pattern based on a bar chord? Ah, we know any bar chord operates like this. Okay, now if I'm going to play G minor pentatonic, I have to remember that when I make a bar chord and I do this, I am now playing the relative minor chord. So B-flat major and G minor are related to each other They're like first cousins. They're built upon the same scale but now G is the note that you'd kind of center the put the tonal center on if you want to call it that. So I can start with this G note four string at five go back to here or I can backtrack to this F because there's an F note in this pattern. So I'm going to give you the same notes that I gave you before B flat pentatonic <laughs> sounds happy played over B flat but if you make the tonal center of this G minor let's say you had a guitar player behind you playing a G minor chord and you played those exact same notes oh missed one Sorry. I'm trying to get ahead of myself those same notes now are centered on that G minor sound so a guitar player is playing a G minor chord, you can play the exact same notes. You could go, wait a minute John, so you're telling me I can play B flat pentatonic over G minor. Yes, because they're built on the same notes. Just like you could play G scale notes over top of the E minor, but you would try to center the notes when you make up your patterns, you try to center them around E. So G would now be your tonal center. Now all this is heavy theory maybe for some of you folks. But just remember that the index finger is giving you the bar chord from where your blues notes are coming from. So if you practice that pentatonic pattern out of a bar chord, it gives you all the notes except one. Wait a minute. So I, I, I'm getting all the notes for the G blues scale except for one. What's the one that's missing? It's the flat five. The 5 is always on the 2nd string in this pattern for G, since we're talking about G minor pentatonic. So if I move this note back 1 fret, then I can go from the 3rd fret to the 5th, the 3rd to the 5th, 2nd, 1 fret back, 1st string, 1st string. So now if I wanted to admit that F note. Let's say I wanted to center it on G because it is G minor pentatonic. Even though I'm still using B flat pentatonic scale notes, I scrambled them and I'm starting on a G and ending on a G. So it's G based, but it's the same notes you just use for B flat. So I'm going to start with G this time. G, B flat, C, D flat, D, F, G. 
So if you notice when bluegrass banjo players are playing licks out of an F shape that sound bluesy, sometimes they're doing bends. Bending is another aspect of blues notes. Now you might think, well, okay, that, that doesn't have anything to do really with pentatonic scale, right? I'm just choking a note. Chokes don't have anything to do with pentatonics, right? No, not exactly. What you're doing in blues when you bend a note... So right now I'm playing a C note, which I know is in the G minor pentatonic scale which is also the same notes that are in the B-flat pentatonic scale. I'm just centering everything on the G version of it. So there is a C note in a G minor pentatonic scale. But what am I doing to that G note? I'm choking it a little bit. Guess what note I'm choking it up to? C sharp. C sharp is the same thing as D-flat. They're the same note. So, usually when you hear a player choke a string, it's physically stretching the string to sound like a note nearby that's usually a blues note. So I'm choking a C note to make it sound like a D flat note, which is a blues scale note. So I call this a trifecta. So the trifecta you have in order is you'll have a major chord like G. If you're playing bluesy things on the banjo, say in a bluegrass situation, you might play a G7 chord. A dominant 7 chord has some bluesy sounds in it. So you might be playing a G or G7 chord, but you're actually playing B flat pentatonic notes, which are the same as G minor. G minor pentatonic, therefore, is parallel to G major in a blues kind of way. I know that's a lot of theory to take in, but if you want to throw the theory out the window, just remember that when you're playing bluesy patterns, all these patterns that you hear anybody play on the banjo and you notice that they're operating out of an F shape, the notes they keep dipping into or back to or choking to they're all coming from that parallel pentatonic minor so G blues is really coming from G minor pentatonic plus that flat 5 which is not in there so we have to add that and that is coming from B flat pentatonic. And some of the most famous licks that you heard in bluegrass banjo, like the Ben Elders lick from Ryder. All of that stuff is actually. G minor slash B flat pentatonic. B flat pentatonic at any point, even if you don't center it on G, you don't always have to think G minor, but if you're playing a good old G chord or G7 chord on your banjo and you're looking for bluesy notes to play over that, those notes are not actually coming from the G scale because, like I said earlier, you might have to think about it as being a G scale that's been altered. Or you could think, well, that's actually the same thing as, say, B-flat pentatonic with maybe a flat 5 added. And you hear players do this all the time, particularly out of the F shape. So all these players like JD, you'll notice that they're operating in and around the F shape. Earl did the same thing. There's a B flat note. JD, anybody, anybody you think of. So, again, this is just my recommendation. You can try to think about blues on the banjo as being a G blues scale, for instance, that has the third and fifth and seventh notes altered a half step. Or you could think about the, you know, B flat 
uh, major pentatonic giving you the notes of G minor pentatonic. G minor is parked parallel to G major. They're not related theoretically, but as far as blues go, they are kind of parked next to each other. Or you could just use the template way of thinking, which again is wherever your F shape is, and that's your, pen, your pentatonic template, instead of playing G major pentatonic, which is happy sounds for G, you would be thinking, oh, let me go parallel here. Let me play notes from the G minor scale, and that would come from the third fret. Now, if you move this to other keys, here's A. And I could ask you, okay, where are you going to grab some bluesy notes for the key of A? You could say, well, I want to take an A scale and flat the third, flat the seventh, and flat the fifth. Okay, that means you've got to know the A scale, have it memorized, and then in your head pull out, you know, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. Or you could just go, oh, wait a minute, let me just use this. Wherever my index finger is, even if I don't know what the name of that chord is, it doesn't matter. This is the same thing beginning rock and roll players learn. They, they cram pentatonic minor scales down your throat because it's the backbone of every rock, classic rock thing you'll probably ever hear. template or this little system looking at where my index finger is making a bar chord and then if I play the pentatonic pattern that I know works off of this by default I'm also playing the relative minor so for the key of A blues can come from C pentatonic C pentatonic has A minor as its relative minor so again think parallel G G blues comes from A minor pentatonic, and then that comes from C major. So C major gives you happy sounds for C. It can also give you the same notes as A minor pentatonic, which you can use for minor chords. But if you play those notes over an A chord or an A7 chord, they give you blues over A. I can keep moving this around. Here's B flat. Where would I get blues for B flat? Well, where's my index finger? D flat. D flat. What's the relative minor of D flat? Well, if I add these two notes, I'd go, oh, wait a minute, it's B flat minor. B flat minor is parallel to B flat major blues wise. So my blues for B flat would come from B flat minor pentatonic which comes from D flat. Do I need to know all that theory to play that? No, I just have to think about the template go uh, F shape, bar chord's going to be here I know how to play a pentatonic scale pattern over that bar chord minus the flat 5. So you have to add, if you want the complete blue scale you'll have to flat that, that note. And again, you're playing a minor pentatonic scale pattern while other people are playing, like if you're playing in a jam or a group, they'll be playing B flat or B flat seven. And you're rocking out over that, actually using the parallel minor version. You're playing B flat minor pentatonic. And you can move this around the neck. Again, this works in all 12 minor keys using this template. So chew on that, and the theory is nice to know, but again, our main goal here is to use these templates on the fingerboard to show you where those blues, knows, blues, know, blues notes are without having to think about theory too much. I think theory is good if you can find a practical application for it. It would probably be better for you to go ahead and practice these blues scale notes, not even knowing the names of the notes. Maybe you don't even remember any of these relationships from the theoretical part. 
but just remember where your index finger is for the F shape and you'll have the scale sitting right there. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next video.